hi. Uh, I'm Arnold 616 We are going to be running I Am Fish Any Percent. Um, I'm a former world record holder for this game and uh, have contributed to a lot of the skips. Uh, I'm also a glitch hunter for the game. So um, it's, this is a really fun run. I hope everybody enjoys it. Joining me for commentary is Carrarium. Carrarium, you want to say hi? Hello, chat. How are you this Friday? And how are you, RNL? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I got my hot drink. I got a blanket. I'm ready to watch some fish. Excellent. So this is um, this game is about these four fish that you see here. They um, got uh, they were friends in a pet store, and they all got separated. And the uh, the goal of all of them is to reunite back in the ocean uh, and see all their fishy friends again. So. Um, we're going to start a new game. Timing doesn't start just quite yet. It starts when we start the first level, Goldfish 1. So we're going to quit out of the tutorial level. And um, timing starts when we start this level. So we're going to start in 3, 2, 1, go. Good luck. Thanks. So the first thing you're going to notice about this game is that I'm not controlling the fishbowl. I'm actually controlling the fish inside the fishbowl. So this is a physics-based game, um, which is one of the reasons people tend to find it a little bit difficult if you've ever seen it on YouTube. But um, the fishbowl needs to be, I need to push the fishbowl to move anywhere and it keeps momentum that I have to take into account. That First thing we need to do is escape the pet store. What's that? I was gonna say that right off the bat is just like such a, break from how these game you would expect any game to work so this is oh, yeah. very fascinating uh, it makes to watch. it really fun there is a little intro here where it shows the, the title screen but they don't actually stop us from moving so we're just going to keep on going as quick as we can and listen carefully here to these two people on the road talking for just a minute coming up So they're talking about a petrol station that blew up. Uh, that's actually a reference to one of Boss's other titles. Um, I am fit, or I am bread. Um, at the end of that game, you blow up a petrol station. So that's that's a, a reference to one of their other titles. Just wanted to point that out. A little there cinematic are... universe. Yeah, it ties into uh, to a lot of other Boss's other games. We're going to see some references to Surgeon Simulator as well a little bit later. Uh, can I ask something? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I noticed that you got this, like, little shell, like, glowy shell thing, and then you kind of, like, jumped to a different area. Did you, like, do some type of, like, checkpoint skip or something? Yeah, so um, whenever we hit a checkpoint, uh, there's there's actually a button that immediately resets from checkpoint. Whenever we press triangle uh, on the controller, we reset from checkpoint. And um, we use that in a couple of different ways. In this case, we're using it to reset our momentum. Like I said, the fishbowl itself has momentum. And like just like this, I don't have a way to reset my momentum, so I'm just kind of flying backwards until I can push forward again and get myself back to where I need to be. So resetting from checkpoint immediately stops all of your momentum. So we use that in quite a few areas just to kind of stop from having to push back on the bowl in order to get where we're going. Just using that's, that to stop. That's so cool. We'll use checkpoints for some other skips later on. Uh, but that's what we're using it for now. Now, see these cars in the road coming up? Um, this is complete RNG. We need to make it past this road, but there is no way to control these cars. So if we're lucky, we'll get a first try. And if we are not, then it might take a few tries to get past these cars. Let's take a look. It's actually really hard. See that bread right there? In 100%, you collect all of the... Ah, we got hit by a car. In 100%, you collect all of the bread and have to get five stars on every level. So this is particularly difficult because not only do you have to get across the road, you also have to get back to the bread and back across the road again. But luckily, we just have to make it to the other side in one piece. This is where uh, probably the majority of runs die, just getting hit by a car and then restarting because there's no point in not restarting when you're two minutes into a run, but we've made it. Yes. The only problem is I we're see. still in a fishbowl. Oh no! So we're gonna skip a cutscene here, but what happens is that 
we are found by a couple of kids who take us home and decide to put us in the attic so that their parents don't know that they found a goldfish. So now we're stuck in an attic. We made it to the ocean and we're no closer to freedom. You know, that's just a thing that you did as a kid, right? Like you found, found a fish a, and you decided to put it in the attic. You find a fish in the ocean, it's still in a bowl. You pick it up, you make it to the attic. Normally here, uh, we would hit the other side of this uh, to save a few seconds. Um, but the problem with that is it skips a checkpoint, this checkpoint here. And anytime you skip a checkpoint in this game, you um, you don't have any more checkpoints for the rest of the level. And since this is a physics game, there are some weird things that can happen. And there's a very rare death that can occur at the very end of this level, so I'm getting some checkpoints for safety. Although there are a couple levels coming up later in which we will not get any checkpoints just because it is just far too slow to get checkpoints. Can I ask, I, so when you were going through the road, I saw the, the bull break instantly. How does damage work in this game? Um, it works in a couple different ways. If you hit something uh, going at a certain speed, it'll break, just like you see it's kind of broken now. You can do that five times before it shatters. But if you hit something too fast, it doesn't matter how much damage you have to the ball. There's a certain speed in which if you hit something or fall, you will just immediately shatter. Oh. Uh, and also with the cars, if you ever get hit by a car's tire, you will immediately shatter. And once the bowl is broken, you have a few seconds to flop around before you suffocate. Uh, something we take advantage of once we are using the fish that aren't always in the bowl. As you can see, we've broken out of the fish bowl, made our way to some sewers. Uh, if we run into any of this trash, we'll also start to suffocate. If you see the, uh, the little six pack cans there. This is why they tell you to cut up those six packs uh, before you throw them away. So fish like this one do not get stuck in them. True. Probably have time for uh, a donation here. Wonderful. All right. We've got a $20 donation from Poop Loops who says, hey, RNL, Poop Loops here. Wishing you good luck on your run, but we all know that depends on our good friend, Scotty. I will donate an additional $30 if you manage to get Scotty Rock Skip on the first try. Donation goes towards the bonus level incentive. Thank you, Poo Loops. I will do my best. We'll be introducing Scotty a little bit later, so um, hopefully I, am... I can make that first try, but, but we'll understand that in a minute. This is Greg. I want to introduce Greg before I talk about the bucket. Uh, we'll be seeing a lot of Greg, so just point him out here. But uh, right now we're in a bucket. It controls similar to everything else, only it's bigger. So we push against the edge of it to try to move it. I'm going a little too fast to have any control. There we go. Uh, these rocks will slow us down. And we don't want to be slowed down because right behind us is Greg. He's chasing us because we stole his bucket. And he loves his bucket so much that the first thing he'll do if he catches us is kick it over, uh, which will kill us. So we need to avoid these rocks. That's a bit of mixed signals from Greg, if you ask me. Uh, yeah. Um, he really loves his bucket, though. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> don't we there all? He is. We can see him chasing us there. Luckily, he's pretty slow. So as long as we don't get caught for too long. Hi, Hi Greg. Hi, Greg. Poor Greg. We stole his bucket. Poor, Poor thing. Poor Greg. This is the last goldfish level. I want to listen for just a moment here because poor Greg is just sitting there thinking about his bucket. He got it out of the water, but listen for a second. My poor bucket. My poor bucket. Poor Greg. Poor Greg. That's not the last time we'll see Greg, though. Greg is about to have a very bad week. We're going to use that uh, the checkpoint reset again here. Normally, we have to flop down from this roof, but... As soon as we get the checkpoint, we can reset from checkpoint. We're exactly where we need to be. Oh, that's neat. And, uh, yeah. So a lot of times we use that. I'm going to back up just a little bit here so we land in the right spot. Uh, this is Scotty. I'm going to explain what Scotty does in just a moment. Another example of the checkpoint reset here, just to reset our momentum. This is actually the room for the first level of I Am Bread, and that is the I Am Bread music that you hear playing. It's 
just wanted I to love call this, that like, out. I love this like in like cinematic universe. It really is really fun. <laughs> yeah. Now Scotty, um, Scotty's in the fishbowl with us, and he will he can mess everything up. He moves around randomly, and he can push the bowl just like we can, just like that. So um, he will make it harder to turn. He will push the bowl in strange directions, and he will overall just mess with the momentum of the fishbowl. And this is a big problem because there is a skip coming up that we depend on him to not mess up. And it's called Scotty Rock Skip. And uh, Poot Loops, here's my best try at getting a first try. See if I can get that 30 bucks from, th uh, from Poot Loops. I believe. Oh, we got on the rocks. As long as Scotty doesn't knock us off, we're good. Poot Loops, I'm waiting to hear that, uh, that second donation. We got a first try. <laughs> We got good car RNG here. But yeah. Uh, car NG? Car NG. We got good car NG. Uh, but that skip, we call it Scotty Rock Skip because if Scotty is in the wrong position, you will not be going fast enough uh, if he's pushing against the bowl the wrong way. And he just loves to go on the wrong end of the fishbowl and weigh it down so that even if you get on the rocks, he'll knock you right off the rocks. We got more cars coming up. Oh, Cross God. your fingers. Oh, God. You're going so fast. No. Cross your fingers. I'm afraid. <laughs> no. Okay, that was close. No, I'm just joking. That entire sequence is scripted. You can't actually die there, but it's fun. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so a little maze here. Uh, those different pipes go into different sections, but we go directly to the right ones. So there's not much time to explain. We are so close to the ocean. We're so close. We're just not quite there. Oh, get get in the jar. So this is the third vehicle we'll be using. This is the jar. Uh, I absolutely hate the jar. Uh, I'm not the best. I'm certainly not the best runner at it. And probably the difference between the world record holders and me at this point is my ability in the jar. But um, it's very difficult to control. It goes fast. And if you push, you have to push against the sides in order to turn it. If you push against the sides in the front, it'll be faster. You can push against the back as well to have a little more control, but it's slower. So it is a sort of, uh, you have to kind of kind of pick whether you want to go faster or have more control. So we're now in the that's, scaffolding. Go ahead. I was just going to say that's interesting. That's like a really, that's like way deeper than I kind of expected. It's also just kind of, it's, it's difficult to control at high speeds. So we're, we're in the scaffolding under the bridge. It can also get stuck on stuff. It loves to get stuck on things. So we're in the scaffolding under the bridge, but everything is breaking. If we can stop getting stuck on that, that'd be fantastic. Please, jar. There we go. Do we need jar NG? really is it just kind of gets stuck right there um like i said physics game so this is only rolling because the jar is the right size in order to roll down this so very typical to get stuck in the very beginning of this this tubing here i would be so where most parts of using the jar are focused on how well you can turn this is the one section where we're focused on how well you can go in a straight line. Hmm. Any any little turn on the jar will kind of send me aiming towards the uh, towards death here. Now we are supposed to go to uh, we're supposed to keep following this and get to a point where we get stuck. We hit a dead end and we fall into the water along with the rest of the scaffolding. But of course we are going to end the level early by finding a way to jump directly into the water. If I can line this up just right. Are we about to have a trust fall? A little bit, yeah. It's it's very it's surprisingly easy to miss. We just want to turn at the last second and if we're lucky we hit the top of this house. We are not lucky, so we have to try it again. Oh, while you're uh, getting there, looks. I, I saw someone in chat ask a question. Is it true that the events of this game all started thanks to a slice of bread being eaten by a fish? 
This is actually true. If you watch the intro, uh, Nigel from Surgeon Simulator, um, it's, it's a really crazy story where he like infused the bread with, we're gonna miss this Just one more time. Hang on, let's see if we got this. Oh, we got it. Okay. So, um, so he infused oh, the bread go. with the oh, that's blood so cool. of uh, with the blood of Bob's, who is who you do surgery on a surgeon simulator, and it made the bread super intelligent, which is um, why the bread from I Am Bread is super intelligent. And in the intro to this game, um, the fish end up eating the bread because uh, it ends up in the pet store, and that's the, actually the tutorial level that we skipped. This is pufferfish. That is not what we're supposed to do. Uh, there's a skip here that's that's harder to pull off than it looks, where if you go exactly the right speed, you can break right here and save a little bit of time by rolling to the checkpoint. But um, this is our second fish, pufferfish. Uh, goldfish is safely in the ocean, so it's time for the other fish to, to meet him. We get to see our friends. We do, hopefully. We'll get there. Um, Pufferfish's ability is obviously that he can puff, and you'll see me puffing against the fishbowl here. That actually gives me a boost of speed. Uh, we're not going to use it for very long because he doesn't spend much time in the fishbowl. But we're just going to use this to try to get as much speed as possible before we break. And when you see me rolling around, that is the maximum speed we can go in a fishbowl. That is uh, a state known as out of control which is where you're going as fast as you can. Oh my God, it's so cute. <laughs> I love it. So I broke early there. Uh, that usually doesn't happen. Hopefully I can make it to the water before I die. Oh no. You're supposed to break at that fence, but um, because I was aiming slightly in the wrong direction, I, I broke a little early on some rocks that are there, but we're good. We made it to the water. So um, awesome. Yeah, Pufferfish's big thing is that he can roll around. Uh, he has some more abilities we'll see in the next level, but that's what we're doing here. I had a small question. Mm -hmm. um, on the overworld, I saw like a bit, like I saw all, like a lot of levels. Is this like, are th all those levels available at the beginning? Is there like a standard any percent route or anything of that nature? Or yeah, can you kind so, of just um, pick whatever levels? So once you beat Goldfish 3, you have to do the, the, the Goldfish levels first because uh, in some of the cutscenes we skipped, after Goldfish gets to the water, he kind of flies up into the air and, and uh, sends the signal to the other fish to, to come join him. So once you, once you finish Goldfish 3, you can do any of the other fish, their first level, right? Puffer 1, uh, Flying Fish 1, or uh, Piranha 1. Usually we do Flying Fish first, right after Goldfish. That's because the most difficult skips in the game are in the Flying Fish levels. Did not mean to hit that rock. Um, each one of them has an extremely difficult skip that is easily a run killer, so we always do flying fish first. But canonically, storyline-wise, um, puffer, it goes uh, goldfish, pufferfish, piranha, and then flying fish. So that's the order we'll be doing it in today. Cool. And that's that's really just the, the story of Greg's terrible week that we mentioned earlier, because we're going to see him in, in every one of the fish's levels. Uh, so yeah, we're doing it in a slightly different order than we would in any percent, but uh, we get to the same place. Thank you for answering that. That was super interesting. Yeah. Uh, coming up, usually you have to land in these little bowls of water, but we're going to try to do it in only two big jumps. Perfect. and get all the way to the end as fast as we can. I love the face on this fish as it's rolling down the hill. <laughs> oh, he's adorable. All the fish are, but I, I, I love puffer fish in particular. I love puffer fish. Do you have time for a quick incentive update? Uh, yeah, let's hear it. All right, we are at $505 out of 1,000 needed to meet the incentive for the I Am Fish bonus level. Arno, how about you give us some information about what that bonus level is and why people should be excited about it? Yeah, so um, there is a bonus level. It is not part of the main storyline, but uh, it takes place in space. 
and you play as all four fish at the same time in space with zero gravity. It's super fun, so um, definitely donate for that because that would be a blast to play. Fish in space. Fish in space. Fish in space. So you're going to see me rolling a lot in this level. Um, but also, when I'm deep in the water like this and we puff, it, uh, it makes us fly up. And there's a little trick here where if you deflate the puffer fish just as he's hitting the surface of the water, you've got a lot of extra height and a lot of extra speed. Uh, we usually call these mega jumps. And they're going to be a lot bigger later, but here we're just using them for the extra speed that we get. Usually. Let me try that again. If you don't line it up quite right, it doesn't work. But uh, that's what you see me doing when I'm doing those big jumps. These thorns we need to avoid because they will slow us down. And um, if we get stuck for too long outside of the water, obviously we die. We only have a few seconds to stay out of the water before we die. So we do not want to run into any thorns. Thorns bad. Thorns bad. Fish good. We we'll probably have time for a couple of donations here. All right, sounds good. We have got a $50 donation from Bossa Daz, who says, we're all super excited to see you run our game at Frost Fatales, RNL. Thank you for all the love and patience you have for our little <laughs> game. And sorry for the airport level. Sub 125, <laughs> here we go. Thank you so much, Daz. I think we can get in one more. Okay, sounds good. We've got a $25 donation from Princess Daisy, who says, you got this, Sunflower. Thank you so much. So that sounded like a dev dono. So the first one was um, was actually uh, the producer. Thank you so much, Daz. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, the second one was uh, my girlfriend, Amber. So thank you so much for that donation. Aw. Shout out to I love, when the, uh, I love when the producers of games are super supportive of uh, of the speedrunners of that game. It's oh, the really, uh, like heartwarming to see. No, the devs are amazing. They've been on they've been on board since since the beginning. Um, but we've been very grateful that they haven't patched out anything that we use to uh, to do skips. <laughs> so this is where you're supposed to learn how to do a puff jump. Just a normal, a normal puff jump. We are, of course, going to do mega jumps almost the entire time. We almost never do a normal one because we want that extra height. We want that extra speed. So you'll see me do that a lot here. So I'm, I'm kind of curious. Uh, how did, how did you get into running this game? Because I know you mentioned that you, uh, that like some, it has a reputation of people getting frustrated at it. So how like yeah. how did you get into the game? So uh, prototypes of this game, when they were even more difficult, if you can if you can picture it, have been uh, going around YouTube for a couple of years. And uh, my son Mikey, he's eight years old. A lot of his favorite YouTubers were playing it, and he was really excited about it. And he would show me a lot of videos. Um, it looked really fun. And then Big Law ran this game, uh, just the prototype of the game. So the first four levels, back in. Um, uh, last year, and it looked super fun. I, I really enjoyed seeing the different fish and how they work and I, all the different skips that, that were going to be possible. So as soon as the game came out, I, I started playing it and started running it immediately. So uh, really kind of this because of my son, Mikey. So shout out to Mikey. I think he's watching shout right now. Shout out to Mikey. So, yeah. So we're back in the jar, and we have a new mechanic here. We have these seagulls. If we move around, that little bar and the seagulls will go up. And if it gets to the top, they will start attacking us. And just like I said, we can hit something five times before we break. The seagulls can hit us five times before we break. But that's not what we're worried about. What we're worried about is a huge out of bounds skip coming up that they can actually just mess us up just by knocking us off where we need to be. So uh, normally we go where that checkpoint is and there's a whole building we go through and we have to go in the jar and do a bunch of things. And we are going to skip all of what you see in this building here by very carefully, I need to make sure the seagulls don't hit me, very carefully lining ourselves up here so we can uh, go out of bounds. I'm just trying to be careful so I don't have to do this twice. And since we are now, okay, don't hit me seagulls, don't hit me. Since we are now officially out of bounds, 
uh, the geometry is super weird. So we need to go a specific route here in order to actually make it forward. We can puff a little bit for speed, but not too much in the jar. It's not as effective as the fishbowl. And if we can just get to the other side of the fence, we will be good. That there is the big giant section of the level we are skipping. This out of bounds skip saves multiple minutes. We've been using it for so long, I don't remember how many, but it's huge. And we got it, first try. And of course, let's go. I was about to say, of course it's the jar too. Of like, course, of course it's you the have jar. To do yeah, that of in course the jar. it's the jar. See, the, it's because of the geometry of the jar turned me, I started going in a random direction. But yes, of course it's the jar. We try to skip the jar as much as possible, but it's unavoidable. And now we just have to get back inbounds. This is where we would be about four minutes later after getting out of that big house. And what's funny is some of these trees have collision and some of them don't because you're not, you're definitely not supposed to be here. We got it. Some of Perfect. the trees are, some of the trees are aware and some are not. Yeah. Good job. Uh, now, remember how I said in Goldfish 2 that if we skip a checkpoint, we have to do the rest of the level without checkpoints. Well, we just skipped a lot of checkpoints. So from here on out, if I die, we reset back to the jar in the birds. So oh, no. we, do have to, we do have to complete the rest of the level with zero checkpoints. Luckily, it's not that difficult. As soon as we get past this section, we will be good. And we got it. Yay! We are, we are past the risky area of this level. So now it's just a, a nice long relaxing swim to the end. We have time for a couple donations. Okay, wonderful. Check that out of bounds, Skip. Let's see a $30 donation here from Poot Loops. That says... Hey, followed up. Poot Loops here. Well done on the skip. Looking forward <laughs> to the rest of the run. Square Thank Twin. You, we have... Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Square Twin sends in... Go ahead, go ahead. Yep. $10 and says, let Scotty bless this run, I believe. Oh, I didn't even talk about that uh, because I was so busy talking about Scotty Rockskip. Um, whenever we get Scotty Rockskip, we say that Scotty blessed the run. Um, so we, we don't like to go forward unless Scotty blesses the run. If we cannot get Scotty Rockskip, then the run is cursed. So we were lucky that this run was blessed by Scotty right Bless away. Bless you, Scotty. Thank you for blessing the run. Scotty has blessed the We've run. We've got a lot of Scotty blessings here. Uh, Left Scar sends in $5 and says, good luck on the run, RNL. Love this game and love this community that runs it. Let Scotty bless you. Thank you so much, Left Scar. So this section here, you're supposed to get hit by, caught by the fisherman, have a little uh, struggle with him, and um, he will eventually catch you and put you in the bottle How and put you in that, that little bucket right there, uh, which is what ends the level. However... We are so lucky that the devs forgot, if I can get this, the devs forgot to remove a little testing ending level trigger right about here. There we go. Uh, that we can just jump right into and end the level. So what? we get to skip that whole thing. But the fisherman did catch us. <laughs> yeah, there's just a little tiny, tiny uh, trigger there that ends the level that, uh, that they forgot to remove. So we just take advantage of that by jumping right into it. I love it. But the fisherman did catch us, and uh, he sold us to this wonderful nightclub. This is the other thing that we use checkpoints for. If you are supposed to be in something like a fishbowl or a bucket, and you hit a checkpoint, even if you're not in it, in, in the thing you're supposed to be in, um, when you reset from checkpoint, you will be back in the vehicle you're supposed to be in for that checkpoint. So uh, there's a lot of cases here where we're gonna jump out or otherwise get kicked out of the bucket roll into a checkpoint and then reset to get back into the bucket. This is going to save a lot of time. Uh, the other thing about this level that I want to point out is that these people walking around have no awareness of their surroundings and will just walk right into us. And if they do, they can easily knock over the bucket and kick us out and kill us. So we do need to be careful of people. If I can jump out of the bucket here, that would save a little bit of time. But Pufferfish is the weakest jumper in the game, so we're still in it. And we just need to jump out over here. I was going to say, that sounds like every club I've ever been to. Just, and no one has oh, any no. awareness of their surroundings. 
Yeah, they, they'll just run right into him. But see, we can just jump out, hit the checkpoint, reset, and we are exactly back in the bucket. We call that a checkpoint oh, cool. skip, and this is the level where we use it the most. We do need to avoid all these dancers. They will knock us over. I'm going to try to jump out here, and uh, that is not ideal. We are going to try to run to the next checkpoint. A little faster if we can jump out and run to it, but I think we'll be okay. We got it. There we go. As one resilient fish. Every time I try to jump out, he doesn't want to. I have to get kicked over for it to work. The fastest way to get through here is to jump out or get kicked out as much as you can and just roll to the next checkpoint, but a little bit random if that happens, and Pufferfish is terrible at jumping out of the bucket, so we're doing fine. We are supposed to go through all of these dancers here and navigate our way through without getting kicked around, but by virtue of this bucket being just the right size, we can go in front of these people instead. We'll still get a chance to see what we would have had to do in just a minute, but this is the faster way to do it. Oh, see? Oh, there's a, there we go. That's knocked. a very oh, funny no! idea. They knocked us over in a way that we cannot get out back to the checkpoint. That is so unfortunate. Oh, oh no! That's actually never happened to me there. Oh, no. It's never happened to she you is... before? <laughs> Marked it off my GDQ bingo. No, so that's okay. It's not that long. We'll just have to do it again. Uh, usually when they knock you over, they knock you over in a way where you can roll around. But if they turn the entire bucket completely over, there's nothing I can do. We're just stuck. There we go. Perfect. And get ready to say hi to Greg again. Hi, Greg. Because after losing his bucket, he is accidentally going to drink a puffer fish. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, Greg. And we are now controlling Greg from inside his stomach. Um, oh. <laughs> yes, we are now controlling Greg. It is probably the hardest thing to control. We still haven't quite figured out how to manipulate it uh, to go as fast as possible. Uh, the one thing that is important is that if I bump into too many of these people, Greg will throw up and we will be stuck on the ground and we'll suffocate. So we need to go as fast as we can while avoiding hitting things. Which isn't great because he's he's very slow and very difficult to control. This is the route though that we would have had to go in the bucket if we couldn't skip it. Unfortunately, Greg is too big to go in front of everybody, so we have to do it the normal way. Excuse me. Greg just wanted to have a small drink to think over the fact that you know his poor bucket got stolen by a fish for a brief moment, and now and now this. I mean, I would, I would need a drink if somebody stole my bucket. Relatable. And or yet there's another bucket, so it's not like buckets are rare. That's true. So we just need to get to the bathroom so we have a safe place to throw up. We just need to get him to the bathroom. All pipes lead to the ocean, right? That's what I've been told, yes. Uh, that's what I've been told, is that all pipes lead to the ocean. So if we can get to a pipe, we can get to the ocean. All right. Uh, we have time for one donation while we escape from from these pipes and sewers we're about to get into. All right. We've got a $20 donation from Bossa Poppy, who says, keep smashing it. Bossa are cheering you on. Thank you. I have time for one more. All right. Katana Steel sends in $125 and says, a chance at a PS5 and more of these cute fish. Sign me up. Oh, I can't believe I'm missing this. This is the one place where I don't mega jump and it's gonna make me mega jump. There we go. Just need to escape now. Dare I say as we're rolling away, poor Greg, honestly. Poor Greg. He lost his bucket, now he drank a puffer fish. Poor Greg. Poor Greg. You're gonna hear that a lot in this run, poor Greg. 
Pufferfish is free. We have made it to the ocean. So three of them are, or two of them are now free. Next one up is Piranha. And just like the other fish, Piranha has his own special ability and way of navigating the game. And he's a piranha, so it's going to be pretty obvious in just a moment what that is. I have no idea what you're talking about. He can bite things, and he can use that to break pipes and flood rooms. So we need to escape this kitchen. We are going to flood these poor people's house. Oh. First we, first we break the sink. Then we can break this pipe. And lastly, we will break the dishwasher and flood the entire room. The amount of water damage that we're causing to this house, I can't even imagine. Irreparable, I think, to be Irreparable. honest. Irreparable. Just need to Thank actually God nobody this. I, I assume nobody's home during this. I hope not, although... They're going to come back to a complete disaster. We can grab this hammer. And now that the uh, water is high enough, we can use this hammer to break out of this window. And unfortunately, we are back in the jar with cars. So... Oh, no! Is, and for some reason, going in the complete wrong direction because that's just what the jar wants to do to me today. Uh, we do try to stay on this side of the road because it's the least likely to get by cars. Although they like to get suspiciously close to the edge of the road just because they know that we're there. We have car and this is probably my worst level because it is 100% jar. Car NG and our and and jar NG in the same level. <laughs> Luckily we'll be done with the cars in just a second. And we get to deal with birds later, too. Oh, good. <laughs> so aside from getting stuck on things here and trying to navigate this jar as much as possible, we don't have a whole lot of new things going on. So uh, if you want to read a couple of donations, now's a good time. Yeah, let's hear from the community. Eterns sends in $10 and says, good luck on your run. I'm sorry for the jar and the nonsense storyline. These runs always <laughs> torment me as you break apart my level design. Less than three. Thank you so much. That's uh, that's one of the devs of the game. Um, I, I appreciate and accept your apology for the jar. And, uh, and frankly, I think I deserve it. So... <laughs> <laughs> for how difficult this thing is to control. Um, but you did a fantastic, a fantastic job on this game. Thank you for all of your work. Tweet. The jar is not so bad. Let's be honest. I'm, I'm just bad at it. Do we have time for one or two more? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. We're just going to watch me bump on things and get hit by seagulls. It's so uh, jar yeah, go ahead. Give us, uh, give us two more donations. Sounds good. All right, we've got $25 sent in from Happy Bear, who says, I just want to announce that I am no longer Happy Bear. I am Happy Fish, because I am fish. <laughs> Great job, RNL. Keep that orb moving. Thank you so much, Happy Fish. Enjoy and your run this morning. It was definitely an awesome run. Uh, we've got $20 from Cactus, who says, Loving I Am Fish so far. Let's get this bonus level. And just to update you all on the incentive, we are up to $705 out of 1000 We are so close to making that happen. Get those donations in. Oh, it's ticking up as I'm speaking, so make sure you get your donations in and say you want to see that bonus level. We can make it happen, folks. Send Excellent. the fish to space. Send the fish to space. So uh, coming up here, if I can hit this checkpoint without getting hit by a bird. There we go. I'm going to reset for the checkpoint here because that also resets the birds, which is going to be very helpful. Except for that one. Um, now coming up here, you're supposed to th think you can get into the water, but a seagull grabs you at the last minute, throws you through that window, where you are then in a bathroom that you have to flood in order to get out. We are going to obviously skip that with, uh, we're gonna try to fall off at just the right angle in order to get ourselves into the water early. 
because we do not want to have to do the entire bathroom if we can help it. Just have to line it up right. Hopefully this does it. I think we got it. If I can get to the water before I suffocate. Come on. Go, little fish. Come on, fish. Ah, made it at just the last second. When you see the screen blackening like that, that that's that's me dying. Are the uh, piranhas able to manipulate the jars like the fish? If you'd uh, like the puffer fish, if you mentioned that earlier, I apologize. Uh, I haven't mentioned it yet. Uh, no, I haven't mentioned the piranha mechanics because in the jar there's not too many of them. But uh, whenever I bite, when I'm in the water, like you see me doing now, that little lunge that he does actually gives him a little boost of speed. It's not too much, but it's enough that it matters. Um, and if you do it at the edge of a vehicle, like the jar or fishbowl, it can add a little bit of speed. Uh, it's, it's not really worth doing in the jar, though, because it makes the jar, obviously, harder to control. You're going to see it a lot in this level, though. And more importantly, oh, I wanted to talk for a minute about pipes here. This is called a pipe whenever you're, you're doing this. And you have a lot, you have uh, force added to the fish while you're in the pipe. So if you hold different directions after the pipe, it can affect how you fly out of it. So in this case, I'm holding forward, just swimming forward, and it's gonna give me a little boost at the end. We're gonna see that a little bit more later, so I just wanted to mention that. But um, this whole level is downhill, which means that if we just swim forward, we will constantly be hitting the top of the water. So what we're doing is we're jumping, and that little lunge that we get from the bite, if you do that bite, just while you're exiting the water, you can get a lot of extra height, which we are going to use here to jump over this log that you are normally supposed to break and go through. Um, so that's a chomp jump. These seagulls are going to help us out. Uh, someone in chat has an important question. Do the fish have names? The fish do not have names. You, you, you heard her. Now we can, we can name the fish ourselves. Um, my son actually has a few names for the fish. Uh, he likes to call the piranha Flippy, which uh, I think would be would be a wonderful canonical name. But that has to do with um, the early versions of the game. The piranha would actually flip in midair when you jumped. Make sure I don't miss any of these. Uh, they removed that ultimately because it made it very difficult to actually grab things if he's flipping in the middle of the air, but we, I like to call the piranha flippy. This is the only optional seagull that we want to get. We save a lot of time skipping that checkpoint because he can just drag us all the way over to this little area if I can make it into the water, not the land. There we go. So I have a proposition for chat while we're going through this. How about a $5 train and you give us the best names you can think of for these four fish? I Let's like head toward that incentive. We can make that bonus game happen. $5 train chat, name those fish. So because we've jumped over everything that we would normally break open and go in, except for that very first one at the beginning of the level, we haven't got to see that very much and we're not gonna see it here either because instead of breaking those pipes and going through, we can clip right in. And oh. <laughs> we've found ourselves in this little sewer. We have to be careful of trash. We have to raise the water level. So we're going to grab these pieces of debris and we're going to... Oh my God, I got stuck. I'd love to say that this has never happened to me before, but it's happened to me exactly once before. Um, okay. That one's not as catchy though. <laughs> no, uh, but we're going to grab these pieces of debris. Luckily, I did get the checkpoint. It is possible to miss that checkpoint and not grab it until the second time. But we're going to grab these pieces of debris and we are going to clog the outtake pipes causing this area to flood. Are there... Do all the checkpoints have, like, the same size? Is it possible to, like... Like, do they have different sizes? Are they... So all, actually, no. They, like... um, different checkpoints have different radiuses in which they activate. Uh, you'll see in the, the very first flying fish level, for example, that the checkpoint is huge. We're not even going to see it, but we're still going to hit it, a couple of them. Uh, whereas there's other ones where you have to jump directly into a bucket and the checkpoint will not activate unless you get directly into the bucket. So they do have different sizes. 
So these valves here raise and lower the water levels as we hit them. And it's a little puzzle. You're supposed to figure out which ones to open and which ones to close and ultimately get it so that the water level um, holds that open so that you can get in to that, that little opening there. It's going to do a little chomp jump here to get a little extra distance while we wait for the water to rise. We are going to skip that puzzle entirely uh, by being fast. And jumping into this hole before it has a chance to rise. Normally this rises above the level that you can get in. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, so oh. that's exactly what I did not want to happen, but that's okay. This will only cost us a few seconds. It's not a big deal. Can't have everything go perfect during a marathon, right? No. So we should be able to I think on the fly. turn this off. And we'll see the water level lower. Uh, it's actually faster to do this than it is to just complete the puzzle normally. But the water level is going to lower here. And when it's done, we'll just do that again. Hopefully this time a little bit faster because we do need to jump into that pipe before uh, it gets cut off from us. This so I'm fish, chomping this as much as I can. Has... Chomping as much as I can to get him a speed. And we got it. There we go. That's better. Uh, more pipe mechanics. I am holding uh, for. I'm swimming forward and swimming up. And if this works properly, we are going to fly out of this pipe all the way almost to the next checkpoint. Carry, uh, Carrarium, did you have something you wanted to add? I, uh, I was just saying that it was a very that front is very flexible. The way that uh, it basically like chomped and then like did, basically did a flip at the very end of the chomp. Well, that's why we call him Flippy. Now, we are we are lucky that uh, that they do not fix their potholes here because we need that in order to get through. But there's a very real risk of getting hit by cars with every single one of these jumps, which will send us flying forward uh, away from the water and we will die. So do you want to be careful not to get hit by cars here? More car and G. That one was I'm gonna close. Wait for the car to pass. I'm just waiting for the car to pass so that we, we know we can get through safely. Chomping both to change my direction quickly and to go a little bit faster. Now, there is a cutscene at the end of this level that we are going to try to skip, but we it, it's, it's very difficult, and if I don't make it, I don't get a second chance at it. So, um, wish me luck on that one. That's that the is the uh, gas station from I Am Bread that was mentioned earlier. That's the one that, that was blown up at the end of I Am Bread. Oh. And here we go. If I can get a perfect chomp jump and go far enough, we'll skip the cutscene. If not, we will watch it and we'll lose a few seconds. Didn't get it, but that's okay. Uh, that was, unfortunately, our friend Greg, who was driving down the road and got into a car accident because of, because of the pufferfish. Oh, poor Greg. Poor Greg. Poor, poor Greg. Greg. So uh, luckily they took Greg to the hospital and they took us with them. So we didn't die in the road after the car crash. Uh, for some reason they put us in with a heart, which horrifically we are destroying. But uh, they froze us and we are now stuck in a block of ice. This is I Am Fish's ice level, basically. Um, it controls exactly how you think a block of ice in a physics game would control. Um, it has a lot more momentum and a lot more sliding than the fishbowl does. And what's more is that whenever we get in front of radiators, uh, it will shrink because it will melt, and it also will break the same way that other fishbowls will break. if we hit stuff too fast. 
So if we want to read a donation here. Oh my gosh, Dewey. Chat is so powerful right now. We've got $25 from Sink who says, I can't believe it. Turns only donated $10 after making you go through those jar <laughs> sections. What a cheapskate. And the jar is all his fault. I tried to tell him. <laughs> but he turns, sends in a $25 donation and says, I will not be shamed by Sync FPV. So here's a donation to put me above him. Fun dead fact. We had a set piece where you had to control a flooded car with Greg in it. Then that crashed. Or sorry, that then crashed. But we had to skip straight to the crash. Oh, that would have been a lot of fun. I would love to see that. Um, so... The fish, the, the, the block of ice becomes more difficult to control depending on uh, the size it is and how much space you have inside of it, as well as which part of the ice you are currently on. Oh, and quick shout out, this desk here is the menu screen from Surgeon Simulator. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my God, that is the worst place to break. Um. Oh no! There's there's a little piece of invisible geometry on that desk that will stop you. That you kind of have to kind of have to go over and uh, just hit it in just the wrong direction this time and fell. So it'll cost me a few seconds. But uh, yeah, you see the way it's flipping around in these pipes can really change the way it controls. So you might see me do some checkpoint resets just to reset the position of this ice cube. I haven't played Surgeon Simulator, but I believe that's also the music from the intro. And for anybody else who has played Surgeon Simulator, we are about to run into Nigel. We're not going to see much of him, but we are going to run into him. You are supposed to hide in little vents and wherever you can. What? Didn't get that angle quite right. Uh, in order to hide from him, but we have ways no of skipping him completely. So practice. that is Nigel from Surgeon Don't Simulator. Hide. You can watch. Hi, Nigel. Hi, Nigel. So, Arnel, you know where you're not going to run into Nigel is when the you fish goes to space because we got that incentive met. Yay! Good job, chat. Yay! Woohoo! Thank you, everybody. Our fish in, fish space. in space. We did it. I got fish so excited about fish in space, I overshot this door. Uh, but yeah, we just thank you so much, everybody, for donating for that. That's going to be very exciting. So, um, that's Nigel skip one. We skipped the first instance of it. These things breaking are entirely random. It's all physics and where you hit it. There's no way to manipulate it. And depending on how things fall, you sometimes just have to reset. There's, there's nothing to do about it. Luckily, we got it on second try. So we're about to go through the second area where Nigel chases us and show you Nigel skip two. I don't quite like the way this ice is on its side. It's gonna make it a little hard to control. So I'm gonna reset here to get the ice reset. And we are going to do Nigel skip two. This is a much bigger area. A lot of uh, bread for 100% runners or casual players. A um, lot of rooms to hide in, a lot of vents. And we're going to skip all of it. Urgent surgery practice. And by skip Nigel, I do mean go directly in front of him, but he doesn't see us for some reason. Stop. That's the kind of attentiveness I'm looking for in a surgeon. Exactly. Um, we don't stick around long enough to hear it, but this entire time he does have a running commentary about offering to do surgery for us. And about the longer he's chasing us, the more blood Bob is losing. So um, I personally do not want to be operated on by Nigel. Why would you walk away from somebody if they're... Nigel! <laughs> he just left his patients in surgery. And he's trying to make us feel bad about it. But that's okay. We skipped him I once, we skipped him twice. He's actually still chasing us, but we are going to get through this section so fast that we won't even see him once. No need to skip him because we don't run in front of him this time. Just need to go fast enough. Are you here for surgery? Oh, there you go. Got a, got a glimpse of it. Uh, if you are... If you find blood to be squeamish at all... Um, now is not the time to watch. I would look away for just a few minutes if you are squeamish about blood. I am... Oh, okay. So That makes sense. We are now in the hospital. <laughs> I was like... And we have these blood bags. 
And when we bite them, it floods the area with blood. Far more blood than you would think are in those bags. Yeah, that... I don't think that's how volume works. It does but in this hospital. I... <laughs> Like, I also didn't take a lot of science classes, so... This is definitely not how how bags of blood work, though. And I don't know what kind of uh, hospital keeps these around like this. Why aren't there blood bags on you? Uh, what? <laughs> but it works out for us. Um, now, ideally, there's another bag over there. That, uh, that does more. Each one of these blood bags is worth 0 0.05 when it comes to the volume that it adds to the room. That big one over there is worth 0.18, so more than three times as much. So we like to hit that early. It's okay if we can't, because we do need to come hit these anyway. It is possible to get out of this room with just four, but it takes a little while for the blood in the room to rise, so it doesn't really hurt us to go just bite the other ones. And this is the last one. This is the one that's worth a little bit more. And because we can do the chomp jumps, please hit the correct one, thank you. Because we have the chomp jumps, we do, there's a lot of other blood bags in those cabinets uh, that normally you would, you would bite and raise it all the way to the top. But with the chomp jumps, we can get just high enough to hit the doorknob with just the bags that we've bitten. And flood the entire rest of the area with blood. I don't think that's how volume <laughs> works, but okay. I see a dev saying, we have been in hospitals for research. It's exactly how they work. I don't <laughs> quite buy it. Well, let me ask, let me ask him this then. Um, have you ever been in a hospital that just has a tank of blood sitting around? Because that's exactly what, what we have here. Just a tank of blood that we're going to break open and raise the blood uh, levels, the water levels here. Uh, I'm, I don't think that's I how have, hospitals work. I have so many questions. <laughs> and we're going to get in the elevator and get out of here. And there's Greg. Poor Greg. Oh my god, poor Greg. Oh my god, Greg, no! <laughs> poor Greg! <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna make our way out to the ocean from here. We have time for two or three donations. My goodness, do we have some donations to read. All right, Rain sends in $25 and says, RNL is killing it. I don't want this run to finish, so please put this <laughs> toward the I am fish bonus level. And you all are so excellent and determined that the momentum has carried us through. We've met the incentive for sending the fish to space. The next thing we want to focus on is that Baba is you incentive. That is for destroying a save file. We need $5,000 to make that happen. And folks, I know you can do it. We've made some impossible seeming things happen. So let's get those donations in and make sure to apply that to the Baba is you incentive. We've got $10 <laughs> from Scott who says, send this fish to space. <laughs> we are sending the fish to space. You guys did it. Thank you so much. This is the last fish we'll be introduced to. This is the one we usually do immediately after goldfish because the skips in these levels are significant. They are difficult, and uh, one of them can actually softlock the game. So uh, we usually do this as soon as possible, but in the order of our interactions with Greg, this does come last. So this is flying fish. I hate it when that happens. Um, of course, our first order of business is to escape the fishbowl, but Flying Fish's special ability is exactly what you think it is. He can glide or fly. So uh, we can jump out of the water and we have a certain amount of time before we suffocate in which we can fly. And of course we abuse that as much as possible because this fish has the most freedom for skipping things. And since we have gotten absurdly good at flying with this Flying Fish, we can make really long jumps that uh, are usually not supposed to be possible. And just like the other physics in this game don't exactly work as you would expect, pushing the fish instead of the fishbowl, the flying fish also doesn't work how you would expect. So I'm not controlling the fish like you would normally think of an airplane. I am controlling the fish's body. So if I want to turn a little bit, 
then I have to turn just a little bit and he will move. If I were to just hold left or right, he would spin in circles. Um, it's a little more difficult to control than it looks. If I fly into any of these cornfields, I will not, I will stop flying and I will suffocate, but we can jump and skim just the top of them and make our way over them. Chat is uh, very happy about the majesticness of the flying fish. The flying fish is wonderful. Almost hit the ground there. That would have been bad. Big city coming up. Now, if you've uh, Small yeah, a little a little town coming up, um, little market. They actually mention it in when you're in the jar in Goldfish Three. You can overhear some people talking about it. But here it is. And um, now, if you have seen this game before or played it casually, or if you saw Big Law's run uh, in GDQ last year, he played this level. Um, you will know that there's an area coming up where you try to jump onto a canopy and you fall into a fish vendor who has a lot of frozen fish for sale and this dark, ominous music starts playing and you have to flop all the way over your dead brethren to make it to a bucket to get out of the level. Um, we are going to skip all of that by just jumping directly to the end. That uh, I, I kind of want to explain this early because once we get there, it's going to go very fast. But that little section where you uh, you flop over the fish, you cannot die during in that little area. Um, so when we're flying, if we glide just over that area enough that we don't hit the ground, but still close enough to the ground that we hit that little that little area where you can't die, we can extend our jump pretty significantly and make it all the way past the bucket to the end of the level. Honestly, that's like, aside from that sounding really cool, that's kind of dark oh, for it a is, game. Oh, it is super dark. <laughs> I, you won't be able to see it here, but you will, you'll probably be able to hear the music, and it is actually, yeah, it is surprisingly dark for a cute little game about fish. But here we go. Some of these people have collision, some of them don't. This woman here does and will kill us if we hit her, which we did. Oh, rude. But the cool thing is uh, you can actually miss this a couple of times and it is still significantly faster than the bucket. Wow. That's how much faster this is. Luckily, she's not in our way this time. So if we can make it all the way to the end without dying, that is Flying Fish 1 Bucket Skip. Good job. Now down the well, we have landed in this underground mine uh, and caverns. We're gonna do some more pipe manipulation coming up here just to come out of the pipe a lot faster and in a better area. I think we have time for a donation here. Okay, sounds great. We've got a donation from Jason LaRose in the amount of $200 that says, please take this investment in fish eggs. <laughs> Godspeed, flipper knots. Excellent. Ace Barreto sends in $25 and says, I wanted to donate to the Save Greg's Bucket Fund. Wait, what do you mean that's not what this is for? Malama <laughs> Fund? That's even better. And that that donor donated toward Fish in Space, which was part of the contribution to make that happen. So again, awesome job, folks. Just make sure that when you're donating, go ahead and assign it to the Baba Is You incentive. If you want to see that met, that's our next one coming up. Yes, let's see yes. the Baba Is You incentive met. I want to see that save file destroyed. I don't know what's going to happen, but I need to know what's going to happen. So, chat, you know what to do. Can I give you one more quick one? Uh, we actually have a huge skip coming up here. So if you can wait just a minute. Um, of course. We have an out-of-bounds skip in this level. Ooh. If I can get past these rocks, sometimes you get stuck on these rocks. Uh, normally what you do is you get into that minecart and you take it across back to the area you were in before. 
and you break a sign. And uh, in some of the riskiest traps for this level, we actually just try to break the sign on the first jump, which is a little hard. Um, so we're not doing that here because it makes the level, uh, it's not marathon safe. But um, we also still don't have to do that because if we can get out of bounds here, which we just did, and we can hit this checkpoint, it'll raise the water levels for us. The only problem is if I go too high, which thank God I didn't do, then we will hit the checkpoint and go back in bounds. And whenever we, we will die because the water level is not high. And um, whenever we restart, we will be in low water levels. Uh, the water level will not be there and we will just suffocate over and over again, soft lock in the game. So we got the out of bounds. That's good. Uh, if you wanted to- Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Oh no. And yeah, that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. I missed the jump that was supposed to be easy and have to restart it. So go ahead and read a couple donations while we get back there. Okay, sounds good. Oh I my. just wanted to call out uh, an $11 donation from Sync saying, just making sure I'm $1 above he turns on the donations. Congrats on hitting the challenge goal. You have $5 from Mackenzie that says, I don't have any good fish names, but I have $5. <laughs> That's just as good. That is just as good. Do we have any fish names? These fish need names. I saw... We... Oh, sorry. Flippy was very popular. It's it's hard to unseat Flippy. Uh, I saw someone in chat say Blinky, Bob, Pete, and Clyde, but Bob apparently was already taken. Mm. So this did cost us a minute. That's exactly the, uh, the problem that I was talking about, is that... Um, if you uh, don't raise the water levels enough before that area and you die, which I unfortunately did because I, I missed a jump, then whenever you respawn, um, you will be above ground with no water and you will just die over and over again. It is a type of soft lock, but it doesn't cost too much time because we can restart the level and do it again. It's just a, a shame that I, I got the, the difficult part and missed the easy part, but that happens, doesn't it? It does. And now now chat and like I can see how uh, Flying Fish is second in the any percent run because it, yeah, if you got about an hour into this run and then that happened, I would be very upset. Exactly. So this is generally 20, 25 minutes into the run. And um, interestingly, the way we do this level now for any percent is actually even harder. So we got the checkpoint uh, because that, uh, that tower that you have to hit, we call it Cotty's Tower, uh, because Cotty was the one who um, found out that you can hit it from the other way. We hit it in that very first jump um, from the backside, which is very hard. And after that, oh, please don't. Please, please don't die. Please get in the water. 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 Okay. Oh, thank God. We lived. We lived. We do have to go back and get this checkpoint for later. But what we do in, uh, in the any percent now is that we hit that from the other side and we have another major skip that's very difficult and um, we do the entire level without checkpoints. So there is a, a very difficult jump at the very end that needs to be done without checkpoints too and it's, it's just very easy to, to kill a run that way. Uh, that button we're not supposed to hit until last. We hit it early because we can. Ultimately our goal is to hit these buttons to open these gates so that a minecart right over there that you can see uh, can make its way to the end and take us out of here. So we need to hit all these buttons. Very good accuracy for a fish. Yeah. Flying fish is... Uh... It, it's actually, it's very satisfying to play Flying Fish because when you first start playing the game, Flying Fish is extremely difficult to control, but the better you get at it, the more fun it is. And I just love doing those really difficult, difficult jumps. Mm. The mechanics are just very satisfying. And since we already hit the button that we're supposed to hit next, we hit it early. All we have to do is make it to the end. And that mine cart is already ready to go. That's the one that's going to take us out of here. We're just going to wait until it gets in position. Do we have time for a donation? 
Absolutely. I we have a two hundred and fifty dollar donation sent in from Agox with no comment, but thank you so much for that generous donation. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. So this is actually an underground storage facility um, for from Surgeon Simulator 2. We are going to try to jump over these boxes so that we can skip having to go through this room. There we go. Got it. That was if you very deploy majestic. Your, thank you. If you deploy your wings early, you get more height. If you deploy them later, you get more speed. If you saw me jumping around a lot, um, especially in Flying Fish 1, that was because whenever Flying Fish jumps out of the water, there's a little boost of speed. But if you do that, you don't get as much height. We're going to try to jump out of here directly to the exit and miss skip the next ice box. There we go. And the next section, we are supposed to hit that and fly into another bucket, but you know we hate buckets. We have multiple skips called Bucket Skip, and this is one of them. Instead of landing in the bucket, we're going to deploy wings early and try to fly directly to the end. Now, this is where things get really hard, especially when you're doing the fastest strats, is that we want to hit this checkpoint and land in the water. But we have no way of... We have no bucket. We skipped the bucket. So if there's no checkpoints, this is just kind of it. We are going to try to jump out of here directly to the exit. It's a very difficult jump. Luckily, we do have checkpoints. Just trying to line it up so that if we miss it, it's, it's no big deal. I'm going to go for it once. You know what? I didn't die, so I'm going to go for it twice. Um, but that's that's what makes it so hard when you, when you do it with the fastest strats. I'm going to try this until I die. There's no reason not to. That makes sense. As, as long as I don't clip the ending, because if you clip it the wrong way, you, you will just die. There we go. Because I really would like to show this off, but with very careful flying, we can go directly to the end with no escalate, with no bucket needed. Now... We can't... Hmm? Go ahead. I was going to say, we can't all be like Greg. We can't all have an attachment <laughs> emotionally to our buckets, so... No, no. We don't care about the bucket nearly as much as Greg does. Now we have found ourselves in the office above an airport. And if you're wondering why was there an underground medical facility that had an elevator leading to an airport, an abandoned facility, uh, the answer is that's just how they built it and uh, nobody noticed. So um, just nobody cared. From what I hear, that is the official reason. We have now made our way to, um, to an office above an airport. I'm just going to choose to accept that. Yeah, you know what? Fair enough. Because I was thinking that. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Uh, I could go around this keyboard, but it actually takes a really long time and frustrates me, so I just reset as many times as I need to to just go over the keyboard properly. I just have to navigate all the different junk that's on this desk, which I swear um, Bossa put here specifically to frustrate speedrunners. <laughs> This is a, a call out post to everyone in chat. Please clear <laughs> off your desks. Oh, this. Here's another thing that's never happened before. I've never knocked that over and gotten stuck. Got around but it, we're, Yeah, we're finally, we're finally off the desk. Um, this is the most difficult level in the game. It has the largest skips, and uh, we may or may not see them today, depending on how it goes. So there is an auto scroller a little bit later in this level. It's uh, it's a little long, so obviously we want to avoid it. Anytime there's an auto scroller, uh, skipping them is what speedrunners want to do. But it involves a series of very very difficult jumps that involve RNG and have no checkpoints. So oh, we are no gonna... checkpoints. No checkpoints. Once we get to the auto scroller skip. There will be no checkpoints with several very, very difficult jumps. And a, and one jump that can soft lock the game if I miss it. So no pressure. None. No, you got this. Good looking airport now, though. Thank you. So normally here we follow a path and try to, you know, get to the next checkpoint. 
we are going to fall very carefully here and we can fall into this body of water and break. Um, because I do plan on trying the auto scroller skip a couple of times at least. Uh, and if I can't get it, we will see the auto scroller. Uh, we are going to go back and get this checkpoint. This is not something we usually do because if we miss the auto scroller skip, then the run is dead anyway. So there's no point in having checkpoints up into there. I'm just going to go back and get that checkpoint. That's where we were supposed to fall. And instead of going through the different fountains, we are going to do an example of one of uh, Flying Fish's very long jumps and how we can kind of skip things by jumping very carefully and stretching how long you can be out of water. I could see the, the screen starting to fade. Mm -hmm. And that's not the longest jump we're going to do. We are going to make that jump look easy. I hope. Someone in chat says, so we all collectively agree flying fish is the cutest fish, right? And I would like your <laughs> thoughts on that. Uh, it's a toss up between flying fish and puffer fish. Uh, in I'm fact, I think we had some comments back in the puffer fish levels. The puffer fish was cute too. Um, I love them all, but yeah, it's a toss up between those two for me. I'm on your this side. This person will really knock us over. Fish. You think pufferfish? Because flying I, fish I is adorable. You have to agree that flying fish is also adorable. Oh, I do. I do. I just really love pufferfish. So we can read one donation very, very quickly, as long as you read it by the time we get to the top of the elevator. Okay, no problem. I just want to throw out my love there for Team Pufferfish. I'm not going to try to sway your mind on that, but I will sway you, chat, to remember the Baba is you destroy a save file incentive, which is at $1,945 out of $5,000 needed to make that happen. Let's see those donations. Luckily, we had enough time for that because uh, the elevator decided to randomly knock me over, which is kind of a risk whenever you're on the elevator. We are just about as big as the elevator, uh, or the escalator, I'm sorry, the escalator stairs so um yeah sometimes we just get knocked off just a risk we take uh but pay attention coming up ahead to our good no 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 okay oh my god the escalator just trying to mess with me today there's our good friend greg is here i just need a holiday hi greg i must have lost my passport poor greg he lost his passport and that is why we do flying fish last when we want to do it in story order because after losing his bucket and drinking a puffer fish and getting into a car crash and getting stuck in a torrent of blood in the hospital he just wants a holiday and he lost his passport poor greg poor greg although it is hilarious when you do puffer fish or uh, flying fish second then it sounds like he had a really bad week just because he lost his bucket, and that's how much he loves his bucket, which is also <laughs> funny. So we have broken the vents. We have uh, kicked off these sprinklers, and these sprinklers are now flooding these suitcases with water. Do not fly out of this airport. They do not take good care of their, uh, their customers. But uh, these suitcases are now filled with water, and we're going to use that to get out of here. Thank God the suitcases are empty. And this is where the Flying Fish 3 auto scroller skip comes in. I'm gonna wait for a suitcase that I like, but uh, if we can have a moment of silence while I do this very big jump uh, in just a minute. We have, we're gonna go for this green one. I'll try this a couple times before we go for the auto scroller. Hopefully I can get it. That's not the big jump, the big jump's coming up. All right, we got the jump. We got the jump. Good job. It's not over yet, though, because now we need to finish the rest of the level with no checkpoints. These oh, are all random. They will go into one of three random slots. And whether or not an open or closed suitcase comes through is also random. So uh, there's still a chance of, still a lot of chances of dying. That is not where I wanted that to go. Okay, we have another one. <sighs> and we missed it because it turned when I wasn't expecting to. Oh. That's okay. That's... That's not that bad. We can give it another shot or two before we before we call it and say that it's running too long. Although that would be a run killer in an any percent run. For sure. 
That actually, I didn't jump out of the suitcase right, so. We do need to get enough uh, speed out of the suitcase where we will not go far enough to get it. You see how we're almost dying by the end of it. And the problem with doing it twice is the second time, there are suitcases in your way. Uh, we'll give it one more shot. One more shot. That was so close. The you second time you do it, after you restart, there's suitcases spawn over there. And as you can see there, they can get in your way. Chat, we need some blesses in chat for this. Send your best luck. But this is where runs would restart if we miss it even once. And there are even faster ways of doing the skip that are even more dangerous. OK, that one more time, one more time. I'm not giving up on that. Out of a bad, bad jump out of the suitcase is not enough. OK, if I can actually get in a suitcase. Once you fail it enough times, the nerves just get to you. I mean, it's a hard, it's a hard spot. Like it to is be very in. hard. Not only is it, as you said, one of the longest jumps, but the fact that like there's no, uh, like, I don't want to say positive RNG because that's not necessarily the word I was thinking, but that like there's nothing that's essentially in your favor after that jump. So yeah, you can very easily get in like your own head after that point. But well, we've gotten this far. Uh, if we die here, then I'll do the auto scroller. Hopefully that I can get to one of these suitcases and we can make it to the end. We just need one that's open. Ah, oh, we got in it, okay. Yes. We still have a couple of difficult jumps left and if we die, we will have to go do the auto scroller. Lest we continue to do this over and over. That's okay. Oh, it's a big room, too. Big room. And there are some faster ways of doing this that are more dangerous. I don't think I'm going to go for those. I think I'm going to go for the, the safer way to get out of here, which is to jump into this big body of water. We can jump into one of the other suitcases and try to get directly to the end, but it is a little dangerous. And uh, this is our last shot at the auto scroller. I'm jumping in the air. So I can try to see the suitcases coming up on that belt ahead. Because we're going to try to jump into one. And we need to make sure there's an open one to jump into. As you can see, the, the ones at the very end are closed. And we need an open one to jump into. There's one coming. So we're going to wait just a minute and go for it. We can just get into the suitcase. There we go. Awesome. A little faster if we can get into one of these two cases and then jump directly to the end. But we got the auto scroller skip. I am so proud of you. Yay. There is only one giant jump left, but if I fail it, it soft locks the game. So. Oh, <laughs> no reprieve after <laughs> yes, that. Yes, it's, it's because we don't have any checkpoints. So normally there's a checkpoint right there. And if you die anywhere in the airplane, you're still in the airplane. Um, but without the checkpoints, we'll go back to before the auto scroller skip. The only thing is, the suitcases will have stopped spawning. So I'm gonna try to oh. line this up, and we have one more big jump. If I can line up the suitcase in a way that it doesn't want to line up right now. I'm gonna wait for that water to stop messing around, and let's give it a shot. Deploy the wings early so we get maximum height. And we got it. Yay! Now we just need to get off this airplane. Ah, oh, I feel so much deep, better now. I was so afraid breaths. of missing that jump and soft lock in the game. But you can see but why this did. whole level, this whole level is just a just a giant run killer. And it is amazing in races too. Um, We've done a race before, and I love saving it for the end because it's like the big equalizer of the race, right? Mm. Now we just need to, if we jump now, we'll hit the tarmac and uh, we'll get an achievement, but we'll die. 
So we just need to wait a minute for the plane to take off and we will be good. We will be out of here. Flying fish will be free. And since flying fish is the last fish, they're all free. Now we're gonna skip the cutscene here, but what happens is they were all free, but they all got caught at the same time and put into an aquarium. No! And look, look who it is there. Look who's at the aquarium. Hi, Greg. It's our friend Greg. He is very suspicious of those fish. He is very suspicious. He knows something's happening. He knows. We have one, one last little piece of the jar. And it's not very long, but um, it does have the most obstacles. Now this is finale. The official level of the, the official name of the level is Leave No Fish Behind. Um, and this is a very fun level because just like Space Station, which we have met the incentive for, thank you everybody. Thank um, you. You control after we rescue them, of course, uh, more than one fish at a time and they help each other. So right now we are, I'm gonna go slowly here because I hate to, I hate to fall in this area just because, just because of jar, jar and G and jar nerves. Um, but we are on our way to rescue Pufferfish over there. You can see by that checkpoint, just waiting for us. And as we rescue each fish, they are going to help us escape. We're going to help each other escape. And now that we have Pufferfish, let's go. Let's go. Teamwork time. Yeah. This is the very first example. Pufferfish can hold this open while Goldfish gets through. Now, we don't want to go too fast through the next section uh, or else Goldfish will get lost and be stuck in the pipe, which will cost us a little bit of time. So everybody has different ways of handling this. I like to go up, swim up normally, the first part there with Pufferfish and then puff to go up a lot faster there and then hold this open. And hopefully Goldfish isn't too far behind us. There he is. And then Goldfish can push this rock and hold the door open for Pufferfish. Now we call this, this level is called No Fish Left Behind, but we're gonna leave fish behind literally every chance that we get. In fact, right now we already don't care about Goldfish anymore. We will not use Goldfish again for the rest of the level. Well, I mean, that's just, I would say that's just rude, but who am I to deny a speedrunner? Well, it has to do with the checkpoints because whenever we um, reset from a checkpoint, all the fish that we have will go back to the position they are supposed to be in. Oh. Actually, would like P uh, Piranha to be stuck there so he doesn't try to follow us. But uh, so Piranha's still, uh, still biting that thing that he was biting, that vent and he's gonna be stuck there. Goldfish is following, but we don't really care because when we reset from checkpoint, all the fish will be exactly where they need to be. Now coming up ahead is a bit of a puzzle where those, see those, uh, those little fence over there that you can see puffer fish can open. What you do is you open one of them so Piranha can get in and have access to a valve, and you open another one where Goldfish will go through a pipe and go to this little other area that we're honestly not gonna see. Um, and then Goldfish has to move around while, uh, while Piranha opens and closes the valve to lower and raise the water levels. But uh, using the Mega Jumps, we are going to skip that entirely just as soon as we flood this area, of course. Because if we don't flood the area, we'll just be stuck in this bucket. True. Do... I just had, like, this interesting thought because we've been talking about, like, jar NG and car NG and stuff of that nature. Like, I'm watching the piranha bite stuff, and I'm wondering, like, is there RNG with, like, how long that animation goes? There actually is. Um, sometimes no. it breaks. Sometimes it breaks immediately, and sometimes it takes a few seconds. That actually is completely random. So here we go. The first part of the puzzle skip. That is the biggest mega jump in the game, probably. 
and it gets us all the way to the ne this next checkpoint. Now we could complete the puzzle from there as pufferfish instead of goldfish, but we are going to skip the rest of it with a couple other mega jumps. Flying fish is just by that checkpoint over there, so if we line it up just right and we don't hit that, that pipe, we can jump all the way straight to flying fish. And then we don't need to collect the other fish either because we can go straight into this pipe. We have time for a donation while we run through this. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get an update on that, Baba, as you destroy a save file incentive. We are just under $2,000 out of the 5000 needed to make that incentive happen. So folks, get those donations in. We've got a few here already, uh, including a $5 donation from Pufferfish that says, hello, Pufferfish are better than flying fish. And here's $5 <laughs> to prove it. Also, let's get a $5 train to 5000 for the Baba Is You Destroy a Save File Incentive. Let's read one more. All right. Cursed Couch sends in $5 and says, Cursed Couch says that Pufferfish is baby, and I will protect them with my life. <laughs> Starting a $5 train for the Baba Is You Knee Incentive. That's fantastic. I don't know what people are saying in chat, but from the donations, it sounds like Pufferfish is winning. I think we have yep. more Team Pufferfish. There's actually been a poll going on asking if pufferfish are flying fish, and it's been very interesting. Well, uh, he can certainly jump high. So um, we have two skips coming up really rapidly in a row here. Now, if you see these escalators here, what we need to do is get into this bucket and then get all of the fish into the bucket and up the escalator. And then we need to get them up the second escalator there. Uh, we're going to skip both of those. So two major skips are right in a row. This is escalator skip one. And what we're going to do is we're going to position flying fish right over where the next checkpoint will be after we get the next checkpoint. So we're going to position them just right. And if we did this correctly, then when I grab this checkpoint with puffer fish, flying fish will grab the check. Flying fish just grabs the checkpoint that appeared and uh, we can reset to get all the fish up here, and now we just need to go to that one. So that's escalator skip one. And that was a nice little flip. Uh, <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> so uh, as Piranha, you're supposed to hit that button, turn on the escalator, get on the escalator. Honestly, um, it can actually take, not only can, does it take longer than doing uh, the escalator skip, it's actually more dangerous because you know how escalators can just knock you over. So instead, we are going to fly directly to that checkpoint. So last bit of flying fish craziness here. And then we can reset from checkpoint and everybody is with us. Yeah, we're so on the I bucket. Said, and we're on the bucket. Now we just need to get out of here. Um, and I say that this is no fish left behind and we leave fish behind whenever we can, but this is the one place where we uh, actually cannot leave any fish behind. It literally won't let us. If we try to get out of here, uh, those gates will not open unless we have all the fish. So we do need to get them all together. Um, this is the last chance. We want to read a donation or two. Sure thing. All right, we've got $5 from Boot Loops who says, Scotty is the cutest of the fish, not puffer or flying fish. Ooh. Sink sends in a $9.99 donation, $9.99 donation that says flying fish is the best. <laughs> You're all wrong. <laughs> Those fighting words. We got Vicarious Vice who sends in $25 and says, leave no incentive unmet. Let's channel that attitude, folks, and make sure that Baba is you incentive is met. Beautiful, beautiful. So uh, we've got all the fish in the fishbowl. Um, your question about can uh, Piranha bite to move things faster? Yes, this is the only place that we really use it though, um, because he will make this move a little bit faster if we bite up against the edge of it. And this is notoriously difficult to control. But uh, once we get this through these gates, we will be nearly to the end. Cool. And we do get to see our friend Greg one more time. Yay, Greg. I think Greg's had a really rough day, so I'm excited Greg, to see Greg. Greg but turns I'm afraid. out okay. He's just he just has a, a very a very bad relationship with fish after after everything that happened this week. Completely understandable. 
Ideally, we don't want to hit any of these benches, but there's benches, but there's not really anything we can do about it. I have lost, uh, I have lost world records to those benches. And oh, lost PBs no. to getting hit by the bench and just losing the the five or ten seconds it takes to reorient yourself. And um, here we go. This is the last input of the game. And that's it. That's time. Nope. Uh, time will be at the end of the level. I will call time. Oh, okay. It'll be, okay. uh, you'll, you'll know. It's when we're all in the water and the final screen comes up. But there's gotcha. Craig, if you hear him saying the fish are up to something. We are. We are up to something. Uh-oh. Greg, why aren't you running? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Greg. Poor Greg. Poor Greg. Uh, so that's I Am Fish. That is the run. Uh, I'm going to do some shout-outs now while we have this cutscene before we do the bonus level. Um, just want to shout out to Poot Loops, Marchino, Cardi, Calibi, uh, Cody, Moto, all of the runners of the community who helped find skips and um, contribute to this run. Uh, Daz, Ed, and Luke over at Bossa, everybody at Bossa and Curve uh, for developing and publishing this game. And happy birthday to Luke uh, Eternus from earlier. It's actually his birthday today, so happy birthday. Happy um, birthday. Yeah. That's I Am Fish. Um, Anybody's interested in running this game, come check out our Discord. There's a link on the speedrun.com page. Hang on. Time. GG. GG. Uh, if anybody's interested in running, come to our speedrun.com page. We have guides. We have an awesome community in Discord. Uh, and we'd love to have you. Now, we did meet the incentive for the bonus level, right? Excellent. So, um... To do the bonus level, you have to have so many stars and so much bread. Uh, it's required for 100%, uh, but in any percent, we don't get enough, so I'm just hopping over to another save file. And this is going to go fast, so here we go. Um, first thing we're going to do is open this so that Piranha can get through and do his thing of breaking doors open. Fish in space. Fish in space. And we'll be in zero gravity very soon, don't worry. We just need to get there. Now, there's a lot of... Um, I'll explain it in a sec. I'll explain it in a sec. Here we go. Just need to open this valve. Go through this pipe. And rescue goldfish. Goldfish is in this little container here. Now, see these bubbles uh, of water that are floating around? It's zero gravity, so they just stay there. Um, the fish can survive in them, and what you are supposed to do is hit these pipes here. See those red parts of the pipes? They will create water bubbles whenever you hit them, which then you can you fly the fish through and ultimately open this. We are just going to open it directly as goldfish using this giant container he's got. That's just and working smarter. Yeah, working smarter, not harder, and we're going to skip everything and leave all the fish exactly where they are because the checkpoints work the same as they do in Finale. So we can hit this checkpoint. And because we don't need to worry about breaking the pipes like that, we can go directly to the next checkpoint and collect everybody by resetting from the checkpoint. Now is where zero gravity becomes interesting. If we don't line this up right, we will have no control over the fish and we will just die. Especially if we hit a wall. So I'm going to take a little extra second than I normally would lining everything up. I'm trying to, I, I hit a wall and almost died, but luckily I was able to, to chomp, use the lunges for the chomp in order to get there in time. Now there are uh, three things that we need to do in order to get this spaceship back to Earth. One of them is close the blast bay doors. As soon as we hit that checkpoint, we, uh, we reset from the checkpoint so we don't have to keep fighting that door. So we need to hit these two buttons as goldfish. And now we just need to move goldfish down a little bit. If, if any of them drift out into space, even if you're controlling a different fish, uh, you will die. And now that we've done that, we can hit this as piranha. We're going to move pufferfish into position. Uh, flying fish is going to go through here. And press the switch. Pufferfish needs to... That's our little checklist there. So just making sure that I crossed everything off and didn't miss anything. Pufferfish is going to hold this button closed. And now we just need to line up this last shot so that we hit the button. Ah! 
I missed the button. I'm hoping I can get back in water. I got back in water by, by biting. That was very good. Uh, it's a little bit hard to line this up, so let's give that another shot. Wait a minute. What does that say? Hold override button. Oh, no. Um, Pufferfish lost his position. He's supposed oh. to be over this button, and he lost. He, he slipped. There we go. So I think now we should be good. The button is green. Let's go for it again. There we go. That's the space station. Nice. On our way back to Earth. Yes. Don't ask why we're not on Earth. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, thank you for joining me. That's I Am Fish. That's awesome. Very, very good run. Thank you for having me on commentary. Thank you for joining me. Awesome. Thank you so much, RNL, for an amazing run of I Am Fish. And we got to see the bonus level of Fish in Space. How cool is that? Chat made that happen. I am so excited that we got, that RNL got to share that with you and that we all got to see those fish in space. Y'all have a lot of opinions about which, which fish are the cutest. And we've got some donations to reflect that here. So just bearing in mind, we're over the 2,000 mark out of the 5,000 needed for that Baba Is You incentive. So keep that coming. I know we can do it. We've just we've got a few games uh, between now and the end of the night. So let's keep making that happen. We've got we got a five dollar donation from the cursed couch again, who just says blub. A five dollar donation from Bossa Daz, who says I tolerate everyone's opinion, even though you're wrong. Pufferfish is best fish. $20 from Jaren that says Fue Coco demands pufferfish. We've got a $20 donation from KCB with no comment. Thank you so much for that donation. And a $10 donation from Miller Queen also with no comment. Thank you very much. Let's get a shout out here to Anonymous who sent in a $250 donation with no comment. Just a reminder that every single donation goes toward that bonus game incentive for Metroid Dread, the any percent race between M-Ray and Sabera. So let's see that happen. I think we've got a $96,000 goal for that. We can make that happen, chat. You have done so much for Malala Fund and for all the events that the Frame Fatales organization has put together on the GDQ channel. I know we can do it. You've got so much momentum. Let's carry it through the rest of Friday night. All right, and we've got a $5 donation here from Happy by 3 who says $5 towards naming Chimchar Fue Coco after our newest good, good fire boy. And with that, we are going to turn it over to a quick break. Let's go ahead and stand up, stretch, get some water, go out there and hydrate, grab a quick snack, grab your favorite hot drink, and we will be back with you shortly.
Welcome back, folks. I hope you had a nice break. We are going to continue through the rest of this Friday evening as we work towards more of our schedule in Frost Fatals 2022. I am Threech, still here with you for the next two runs. It's going to be a good time, so let's see how we're doing here with these incentives we've got going on. We've got the... As a reminder, uh, we've got a few coming up for Pokemon Pearl, including naming Chimchar and naming the trainer as well. Also, like to make a quick acknowledgement that we have raised over $86,000 in this event. Incredible work, team. Just absolutely amazing that everyone has banded together to make that happen. We can push this further. We can get to that $100,000. I am absolutely confident that we can make that happen. So keep donating. Uh, we're going to do as much as we can to raise money from a Lola fund, and all of you are making that magic happen. We're at over $2,200 out of 5,000 for the Baba is you destroy a save file incentive. We've got $50 coming in from Moradin who says TGIF, 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 and still more Frost Fatales GDQ to go. We've got $25 from Ashling who says, daily reminder that you're awesome. Yes, you. If I keep donating, someone will say my name correctly, right? Right? All right. So with that, we are going to head over to hear a quick word from Malala Fund. So stick around and check out this video. I met some of the girls who were dreaming to be engineer or architect to rebuild their countries. But parents do not imagine their girls being in a man's world and so they do not encourage them to do so. When it comes to refugee girls, uh, the issues that they face vary depending on which country is hosting them, but mostly uh, it is lack of financing to girls' education uh, and, and especially secondary education. So in Lebanon, our work is focused on uh, using technology. Our champions are developing uh, tools and devices and, and they're using technology so refugee children and especially girls can complete their education. My name is Naila Fahed. I am the co-founder of LAL, Lebanese Alternative Learning NGO. The main goal of uh, Lebanese Alternative Learning NGO is to help vulnerable children keep up with school by providing digital support programs and access solutions. Today, technology is a necessity in education. It's no more a luxury. Unfortunately, it is still uh, widening the gap between privileged students going to privileged school and underprivileged students that do not get access to innovation, to technology. We at LAL, we strongly believe that technology uh, should be an equalizing force when it comes to education. Digital education should be free and should be accessible to all. And when we went to the field, we discovered that a lot of schools in remote areas have computer rooms, but they are not using it because they do not have internet or adapted program. So the tech team, to solve the unreliability of the internet connection in remote area, came up with this idea of uh, what we call Tapshura in a box. The box is based on a Raspberry Pi technology, so it's a small computer, it's uh, used as a tiny server. We put all our content on this small micro SD card, we upload the content on this micro SD card, we put the card in the box. And now the box is a library of all our content that will uh, hotspot wireless up to 30 computers and work offline. Children get very motivated when you come with a digital program. We take them to understand better how they can use a computer like a real course, especially for those who are afraid to ask the teacher, I didn't understand, can you explain again? from 
from the centers who were invited to meet with Tim Cook and Malala. They were so emotional, it was amazing to see. I think it is very important in the humanitarian world to collaborate. And I'm very happy that Malala Fund is supporting a collaborative project because it is enhancing the idea that humanitarian NGO should collaborate, should work together and not uh, separate it one from the other. My hope for the future as an NGO is really to get our Tabshura program as a reference in education and benefiting more and more people in Lebanon. And the co-creation box can very easily go outside uh, Lebanon. And my bigger hope for uh, uh, girls' education is that Malala Fund enhance the ambition of girls to fight for their education. Welcome back, Twitch Chat to Frost Fatales 2022. Thank you for sticking around and get ready for a very exciting and fun Friday night filled with plenty of games that you and I are both looking forward to. Let's check in a little bit on some of the donations, shall we? We've got a $75 donation from Anonymous with no comment. Thank you very much for sending that in. We've also got a $25 donation from Coyote with no comment. Thank you again. Uh, just to let you know, in case you haven't checked recently, the Yeti is donating $5 per Frost Fatale shirt sold to Malala Fund. We also have a Frost Fatales event pin available, which is a first for Frame Fatales events. You can head over to theyeti.com to find both of those items. Over $2 million has been donated from the Yeti to GDQ Charities. They are an awesome partner. We are so excited to have these really excellent shirts and a pin this year to be able to uh, have you enjoy those and take them home. Kyrell sends in a $25 donation as well. Thank you so much for that. No comment. We do appreciate that uh, donation, however. Metal Med B sends in $25 and says, Frost Fatales is such a fun event. Looking forward to this Beast Wars run and trying for that Baba is You incentive. Let's turn that try into a do, folks. I know we can make this happen. Flyron sends in $10 and says, education rules. Everyone deserves it. It's a basic human right. Let's go school. Here is $10 to name the Pokemon trainer after my cat. Let's take a look at those incentives. We've got for Pokemon Pearl incentives to name Chimchar with Fue Coco currently in the lead, followed by Cute Chat and Buckaroo. And the Pokemon Pearl trainer name incentive has Ham in the first place uh, with Tote Bag and Patho following behind. So if you have interest in uh, naming those characters, please get those donations in. Uh, also, just remember, we are trying to meet the $5,000 incentive for Baba Is You destroying a save file. We are at $2,339.99 out of that $5,000. So go ahead, folks. If you are able to make a donation, send those in and make sure you're assigning those to the incentive or including the incentive in your comment so we can make sure that counts. All right, folks, it's about that time. We are going to head over and turn it over to Alice Noon, who will be running Beast Wars Transformers Predacon campaign. So, Alice, the mic is yours. Take it away. <laughs> 